Hello, everyone, and welcome to our IMS showcase on Gale databases. Uh, welcome those of you who are joining us live and also those who are watching the recording. Uh, this is another one in our series highlighting all of our different uh, IMS showcase tools and today being the Gale Research Databases. So I'd like to take a minute to introduce myself. My name is Tim Leister and I serve as the Instructional Technology Specialist here at Lancaster Lebanon IE13. Uh, Gale Databases is one of the programs that I'm taking the lead role in. Um, prior to IE13, I was a science teacher at Garden Spot High School for over 10 years and then the Instructional Technology Coach and Coordinator there for the past 13 years. Uh, and now joining IU13 just this past year. So there you can see my contact information where you can find me online as well. If you have any questions related to any of the IMS tools or also to the Gale Research Databases. So I wanna get right into it. Um, Gale Research Databases are one of the tools that we provide as um, one of the resources as part of uh, IU13's IMS. And we'll kind of go through a little bit as to what we do provide and what we don't provide. Uh, but as we all know, the, uh, the internet is full of tons of good and bad uh, resources for learning for our students. Uh, but what Gale Databases allows uh, you to do as an educator is filter through all of that information and make sure that you are providing your students with confidence research tools uh, available to them when doing uh, research projects or trying to learn about specific information. So Gale databases provide learners with that powerful search tool to make sure they have reliable results for research purposes. So from their, their website here, uh, there you can kind of see their tagline. Uh, not only is it reliable, but timely uh, to be successful. So Gale research uh, databases are also updated very frequently uh, to make sure that you have uh, timely and non-outdated information that you can provide to your students. So for a little background as to Gale, let's watch this quick uh, video from Gale about their resource database. Where does learning begin? When does learning stop? And when there are learning disruptions, how do we get kids back on track? As an educator, you know that preparing students for tomorrow means making a commitment to them today and every day. Because kids don't just grow up, they grow in every direction. Whether they're facing a challenge or want to be challenged, you can create a space where all students thrive, where they explore the world beyond themselves, learn how to think critically about today's big issues and put them in context. These age and skill appropriate databases combine the best of Gale's content with videos, periodicals, and primary sources, helping to meet today's curriculum needs. They grow with students as their skills develop, from grade school to graduation day. They offer homework help, introduce diverse viewpoints, and engage and meet students where they are inside or outside the classroom. With built-in translation, citation, sharing, and other tools, Gale in Context makes learning more accessible for everyone. Help kids see what's possible as they grow, not only as students, but into the next generation of advocates and leaders. See what's possible with the entire family of Gale in Context resources at gale.com slash in context. So that gives you a very quick overview as to um, what Gale provides to our students. And uh, I want to kind of take you through a little bit of a demonstration of Gale research databases and what's available. Uh, so uh, we'll kind of start out here from the homepage of Gale. And each school district has their own specific login to their product menu items. So depending upon the school district, where you teach in or your students go to, you might see a slightly different viewpoint when logging in to the Gale product menu. At IU13, as part of the IMS, we provide the Gale in Context for High School, 
and also the Gale in Context Opposing Viewpoint databases that you see right here. Uh, depending upon your school district, again, you may have access to more than just those, uh, but those two are what we'll focus on today because of all the public school districts within IU 13 have access to that. So um, we do offer consortium pricing to the other Gale databases that you can add on to your collection, whether it's a public or non-public school, uh, you can uh, buy into those different databases that are available to you. So this product menu is also something that can be customized. We won't get into that too much today, but uh, the customization of the Gale homepage is something that's popular or that's possible uh, once you have your school district's uh, page set up. So the, the what they call their studio page allows for some customization. So if you want the Gale uh, page to be kind of your home page, not only for databases, but also for links to other resources, you have the flexibility in order to be able to do that. So again, looking back at our menu right here, one of the other things you'll see is something that uh, Gail is continuing to add to is their collection of eBooks. Uh, there are some uh, electronic books in there that might be available to you already. Um, they don't require a checkout and are available 24 seven. Uh, so you may find some eBooks available to you as you go in there. All right, but we wanna start out just by taking a quick tour of how the uh, Gale in Context uh, high school page is set up. So we're gonna go ahead and enter into that. And again, you'll see right here that uh, I am uh, in the Gale in Context high school page right here, the top left-hand corner. You're gonna see some quick menu items right here, and then you're always gonna see a changing topics of interest uh, location right here that has some new topics to explore uh, that's always being changed within that location. All right, so the, the high school in context really focuses on different topical uh, information that students might want to research. And you'll notice they've categorized them into uh, items like government, science and health. You can see all the topics listed here, well over a thousand topics that you can see uh, listed here alphabetically, and you can even sort through them by those different topics that you see on the first page. So again, these are typical types of projects that students might be, or topics, excuse me, that students might be researching. Uh, anything from anatomy to genetics to the country of Pakistan. You're also gonna see a lot of biographies in here uh, for athletes such as Jesse Owens. You'll see some literature things in here as well, uh, such as the book and the, or the movie, The One Flew Over the Cuckoo's Nest. Uh, you'll also see if there's been recent updates. So for example, the American poet, Robert Frost, there's been a recent update uh, to his page. So you'll be able to kind of see very quickly if anything new has been added uh, to that page. Doesn't mean the other ones are outdated. It just means there's been something uh, recently added to that page that may have not have been there before. Okay, so if we go into uh, just one topic, I'll go ahead and click one that's uh, somewhat unique to central Pennsylvania. Uh, the topic of fracking is something that students are learning about because it's something that uh, is happening here, especially in Pennsylvania and has become a, a newer technology. Uh, but we just choose that topic because it's a good example here of giving a brief overview of what that topic is. So students are just starting to learn about it rather than say Googling the word fracking, uh, they could go in here and get a quick overview of what that topic is. So on this page, it'll give you a very quick overview as to what uh, types of sources you're gonna find on here. Uh, so the number next to the topic will give you uh, how many uh, of that particular media you will find. So just within news items here, over 1400 news items related to the topic of fracking with over 11 images listed in here. So right away, it's gonna show you some featured content. This is gonna be some of the more updated information that you'll find on here. There you'll see some quick videos that might go along with it. And again, sorting these chronologically is to the more updated magazine articles that you will find here. 
Uh, one of the things I want to point out to you right away is that you will notice within each of these, uh, you're going to see the author. You're also going to see the source as to where it comes from. You'll see the number of words, and also you're going to see the Lexile level listed there, along with an icon uh, that shows the level content for Gale. So I want to point that out to you right away here, that when you look at the Gale context uh, and Lexile measures, you're going to see five different levels listed there, level one up to level five. So it's kind of indicated uh, like the dots on the dice here for just a very quick visual for you. So as you increase in levels, it also increases in Lexile level. So uh, you'll know your students' Lexile levers, levels depending upon generally the average grade level where they fall, but we may have some middle school students who are still reading at an upper elementary level or even high school students reading at a middle school level, or we have some middle school students that are reading at a very high level. So this context level here will allow them and also allow our educators to see very quickly uh, what is right for that individual student. So if we're looking at this fracking topic here, you'll notice these featured contents are always are all very high in context level, where over here on the right-hand side, there's some references that are a little bit at a lower level. So it might be a quick view and might be a conversation to have with students to, uh, to make sure they stick at their Lexile level to, uh, to make sure not only they understand the information, but are able to read and find out more about it. Okay, so if we, uh, let's just go ahead and I'll uh, select one of these, perhaps uh, this a little brief uh, topic in here speaks to something that I might be interested in. And when I click on it, it'll take me to a page that looks very similar for all the different sources within Gale. All right, so right away, you're gonna see the ability right here uh, to see the data which it's published, the publisher, also the document length, and again, the Lexile levels. And again, what makes Gale so unique compared to a, a print text is the ability here to translate, change the font, display options, or even listen to uh, that particular article. So this is a very short article, but uh, it might give some background information about it. Uh, it's gonna have some maybe related articles that goes along with it. But again, very nice features in here that we have the ability to translate the article to a student's native language. Uh, for accessibility purposes, we can make that text larger or smaller, and we can even change some of the display options in here and even listen to uh, it read to us. Okay, so we also have the ability uh, very quickly to send this article to some location that might find it easy to uh, collect. So for example, here you see I have the send to Google Drive functionality. So, but just by clicking on that icon, it's going to redirect me to the location where I actually have this uh, saved. So inside my Google Drive folder, it just sent that article there that I now have the ability to access uh, that location uh, for that article. And then it gives me some more functionality as to how I might actually uh, go about using uh, that information. So very quickly, uh, I could take that information, share it with some other students, uh, maybe start to uh, add in my own text, uh, but there's also some tools right inside here where I can do some of those same things, such as the highlights and notes section up here. So you'll notice I can highlight here. I can even mark it and place my own comments right in here. So as I save these comments, it becomes a highlighted note that I then have the ability to access later. So during my research, I can read some passages in here, take some notes, and then even export that information at a later time. Some of the other tools in here, we can send it via email, we can download the article, and we can even print the article on paper as well. Uh, the other nice feature you see on here is the citation feature. Uh, students find that they want to actually uh, use this in a research article. They can click that citation button and very quickly they can pick the format that might be required of them, such as say APA 7th edition. 
Uh, they can select it all. They can copy and paste it into a, a bibliography or a work cited, or you notice even in here, it can export to some of the, uh, the bibliography tools that are available and are used most commonly like Noodle Tools and EasyBib. And you can even send it to a Google Drive location where you might collect those. So every resource within Gale is going to have that functionality that goes along with it. So that's the Gale in context for high school. Uh, the other one that is a, a great resource is the opposing viewpoints. So again, it's gonna look very similar to you when you log into the Gale uh, in context opposing view site. You're gonna see right at the top some issues of interest that again, uh, that they're highlighting that might be uh, something that's coming up or something that's in the news. And then you're gonna notice here some of the issues uh, that are categorized again, similar to the other page that were in there. So uh, all of these can be found then if you browse all 468 issues. And as you look through the list, again, what makes the Gale in context opposing viewpoints so unique is that for each one of these topical items, there's probably multiple sides uh, to the argument that by going to one source on the internet may not provide all of that information about that particular topic. So for example, the idea of endangered species, I'll just go ahead and pick that one topic. All right, so again, we're in the opposing viewpoints database and you'll see here, it's gonna feature some of these different viewpoints that again, are going to be uh, perhaps on the pro or con side of an individual topic. So with endangered species, for example, uh, I might give a brief overview here and perhaps some uh, sources may feel the Endangered Species Act or law may be a little bit too restrictive or not enough restrictive. So you're gonna be able to find multiple viewpoints uh, about that particular topic that you can find in here that would be available for students. So again, uh, unlike the other one, which is more factual information about uh, a particular topic, uh, specific content, bibliography or biography or something like that. Uh, these topics in the, uh, in, in the opposing viewpoints database is going to have uh, multiple sides uh, to that. So you'll be able to find information, you'll be able to find videos, some infographics in here that are going to present kind of multiple sides of a particular topic's argument and allow for uh, both or multiple, maybe there's more than just two uh, uh, viewpoints to be expressed in there. So all of the articles and the resources are gonna be very similarly set up. So uh, you could again have multiple students within a group researching the databases. Uh, they could find the article, they could be taking some notes. And again, they could send this particular article if they find it interesting to Google Drive where they could cite it as well. So all the same tools you're gonna to find here in the opposing viewpoints databases, just as you found uh, in the high school resources section. Okay, now both of these tend to be, again, at a little bit higher uh, reading level. So you're gonna notice, again, most of them are level three, four, or five, as far as the Lexile levels are concerned. So again, these are provided by the IMS to all IU13 public school districts. Uh, so you have those available to you. Um, but one of the other databases, again, if you're a little more uh, looking at an elementary viewpoint, could be uh, the Gale in Context Elementary database. So I just went to a different uh, school district scale product menu here. And I wanna show you this one. Again, this one is not provided by the IMS, but it might be one that you wanna consider adding to your school district because it provides to you the ability uh, to provide a lot of the same Gale research database information to students, but at a level that's much more appropriate at the elementary level. So you'll notice right away when we log in, you're gonna see a lot more visuals, you're gonna see a lot more colors. You're gonna see much shorter questions and much less vocabulary for students uh, that is more age appropriate for those individual students. If you are a power library school district, you're actually gonna have Gale in Context Elementary provided to you uh, 
as part of your Power Library subscription. So as students uh, look through these different topics, for example, if they were uh, perhaps doing a little bit of research on a health topic, and they were looking at, say, at food and nutrition, you can see the, uh, the clear colors and um, the information is going to be a little bit easier for students who don't read at quite a high as level as high school students that could go into these locations and find out the information. So it breaks down the information into shorter, uh, quicker facts in here. Uh, you're going to see articles that, again, are at a lower reading level. You might still see some that are a little bit higher uh, if they're current event locations. Uh, but here's one, for example, that's at a level one content. So if I go ahead and choose that, you'll be able to see that this level one content on healthy diets and foods is a little bit more visual. Uh, the vocabulary is going to be a little bit more simple. And they're going to make sure uh, that they kind of show you just the important information and still show you the citation for students to, to work on their uh, citation skills and can even export it to other locations. So you're going to see a lot of the same functionality in here, but you're going to see it much more visual for this particular topic. You see there's a level one, which is at that 480 Lexile level, but then you can also take the same topic. And if it's a little more of an advanced elementary reader, you could make that uh, higher and it's going to show them uh, the same information, but perhaps at a little bit uh, more detailed level. So that Gale in Context Elementary is again uh, a lot of the same quality database information uh, that's available to the high school students, but creates a much more visual uh, experience for students that's going to have pictures, that's going to help them find information uh, that might be a little bit easier to browse uh, and locate sources that might be relevant to them, but also doesn't have, say, the, the high-level topics or perhaps the, the more uh, age-appropriate topics that students aren't quite ready for uh, that they wouldn't have access to. So uh, these can be structured so that students uh, at the elementary level have access to this, uh, whereas they would not have access to the high school databases if they're logging in as just an elementary student. So you have the ability to kind of restrict uh, what databases are available to students based solely on their individual grade levels that they have or they're currently located in. So that gives you a quick overview of those scale databases. Again, focusing on what their research uh, levels are. Again, this is just one of the uh, services that we provide at the IE13 IMS. We wanna share with you our, our blog site, which contains many links to more resources about the other IMS tools that are available uh, and any updates that we have about the products that we support, we, you'll be able to find in there in timely ways. So if there's any Gale uh, updates that happen, we'll be sure to post them in here along with many of our other products that you uh, have supported for my the IE13 IMS. So I wanna end with that and just uh, thank you again for joining us today. Uh, if you have any questions related to Gale or any of the IE13 IMS products, please feel free to reach out to me or my colleague, Keith Royer, and we'll be sure uh, to be able to answer them. So again, thank you for joining us today. The, the slideshow and then some resources will be available uh, in the, uh, the YouTube description, as well as you could find it in our IMS uh, Schoology course that is available to all of our IE13 uh, educators as well. Uh, you just have to get the join code in order to join that. So again, thank you for joining us today and uh, please feel free to, to look over any of our other webinars uh, that we've been providing this fall that showcase RMI tools. Thanks so much, everybody. Have a great day.